presents an informational webcast. On this edition, Special Litigation Committees with T.K. Kerstetter, President of Corporate Board Member, and Greg Wiener, Partner, Freed, Frank, Harris, Schreiber, and Jacobson, LLP. Welcome to this edition of Corporate Board Member's Informational Webcast. I'm T.K. Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member, and it's my pleasure to welcome you because we're going to be dealing with a very interesting topic today, one that we don't hear about all the time but is critical to boards and to companies, and that is Special Litigation Committees of the Board. And joining me to cover this important topic is Greg Wiener, who is the litigation partner um, who represents clients in complex commercial disputes for the law firm Freed, Frank, Harris, Shriver, and Jacobson, otherwise known in the public as Freed Frank. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, TK. Okay, we're talking about a topic here now that is not everyday common topic, okay, even in the boardroom, okay. So the first of all, uh, why will somebody form a um, special litigation committee? What is, what is a special litigation committee and what makes it so significant? Sure. Well, first of all, a special litigation committee is a subcommittee of the board that is formed in response to a shareholder derivative case that's been brought against certain officers and directors of the company alleging wrongdoing by them. And uh, the uh, reason for forming a special committee is to deal with that lawsuit and give the company control over how to respond to that lawsuit. So um, if it's, um, when you say derivative, that means that it can't be a regulatory investigation. It's all centered around a derivative lawsuit from shareholders. That's right. The derivative case would be one in which a shareholder brings a claim alleging wrongdoing by the board or certain officers. For example, they could allege breach of fiduciary duty and the like. And the, what's interesting about that kind of a lawsuit is the suit is brought on behalf of and for the benefit of the corporation but it is brought by an individual shareholder. So why as, as would I as a board, why do I need to form this? Is it, does it do something special in the way of giving me a chance to get out of the suit? Or? Sure, it, it, what it does is it gives the company the potential to control the disposition of the lawsuit. And the first thing is in a derivative case, in order for that plaintiff to proceed, they have to show that a majority of the board is in fact interested in the uh, dispute or is not independent in order to get past certain requirements that would um, require that they have the company control the suit in the first instance. So assuming they've gotten past that hurdle and the plaintiff is able to show that a majority of the board is in fact interested in the transaction and could not independently review whether to proceed with these claims against certain officers and directors. That is when the company can establish a special litigation committee to take over investigation of the allegations in the case. And these are, these are especially significant because if done well, I assume that there's benefits to the company and sure. to the board. And, and the main benefit is ultimately to control the disposition of the lawsuit, whether it proceeds, whether it's dismissed, whether it's settled. But of course there's a whole process that has to be gone through before you can reach that point. Now w was this something that all boards would consider or is this something that we see selectively done depending on what the, what the situation sure. is? Sure. Well, these days, uh, first of all, almost every um, high-profile corporate scandal or um, significant corporate event leads to a derivative lawsuit. And, you know, just by way of example, in the Facebook IPO has led to derivative cases against the Facebook board. Uh, the J.P. Morgan trading loss, you know, multi-billion dollar trading loss, has led to derivative cases against the J.P. Morgan board. So. Uh, in all instances where these cases are brought and where the plaintiff is able to show that a majority of the board is not impartial, it's fairly common th these days that you would um, 
implement a special litigation committee, establish a special litigation committee. So now that we've established what it is and why it is and why it's significant, how does the board go about setting up their committee when they've got one of these derivative suits against them? There are a number of steps that have to be taken. The first is to hire outside counsel and counsel should be hired who has no prior relationship with the company itself. That's the first step. Second step is really in many ways the most important which is to determine which members of the board are in fact independent. And the independence test is subject to strict scrutiny. In fact, one of the cases referred to uh, the test as the members have to be like Caesar's wife above suspicion. So you can see the, the kind of scrutiny that that gets. And so the, the next step after hiring counsel is for counsel to meet with all of the potential independent board members. So it could be two, three, or four members of the board who are going to potentially serve on this special litigation committee and to review their financial ties, their charitable ties, and their personal ties to the defendants in this lawsuit. And as part of that review, you need to strictly look at are there any connections that could possibly con be considered as impairing the impartiality and judgment of that member. So as clean as, as possible and independence is the goal for creating that part of the the, that's correct. And, you know, there's, there's the adage in real estate, the three most important things in real estate, location, location, location. Well, I think the three most important things in establishing a special litigation committee are independence, independence, independence. Got it. So now that you've had, now you've, we know the reason, we've got our committee set up. Um, how do you go, how does the committee go about doing its work, conducting the uh, investigation, and then what happens when their investigation is done? Sure. The investigation would proceed um, as many internal investigations would, but most significantly focusing on reviewing documents, interviewing uh, witnesses, and uh, evaluating sort of the strengths and weaknesses of the potential claims against uh, the defendants. And so it's a whole range of document review, interviews, legal analysis, and the like. The ultimate purpose of which is, or the ultimate end product of which, is to prepare a lengthy report which would set forth the work that was undertaken and um, the conclusions that have, been, that have been reached by the Special Litigation Committee. And then, now, then when they have those conclusions, what do they do with those? Sure. Well, at that point, there are a number of options open to the committee members, and uh, what they will do is they will bring their report and their um, decision to the court that is hearing the derivative case that was initially brought. And the options include the Special Litigation Committee could pursue the claims and take them over from the plaintiff, so pursue is one possibility. Uh, dismiss the claims and seek to have the claims dismissed because it's not in the best interest of the corporation to pursue the claims. Three, they could determine to settle the claims in some way. And lastly, they could just defer to the uh, shareholder plaintiff and, and leave it to that uh, plaintiff to pursue the case. That is the most rare use of the special litigation committee process because at that point you haven't really done anything except handed it back to the original plaintiff. So that's not, that's not a common outcome. So then the judge will take that, hear their sure. report and... There's actually an interim step, which is the plaintiff in the derivative case gets the opportunity to take discovery of the special litigation committee members and to um, look into the process that they followed because the court will not defer to the Special Litigation Committee's recommendations unless the members are independent, there's been a good faith investigation, and the uh, ultimate determination is one that's reasonable and you know, reasonably in the best interests of the company. 
And there is the reason that independence becomes so important, because you will be deposed looking for that one small thing that can put a damper on the case. Exactly. And, you know, one example of that is a well-known uh, case involving Oracle and uh, Larry Ellison, where a derivative case was brought, and Ellison and a few other directors um, were um, alleged to have engaged in insider trading in Oracle stock. So a shareholder plaintiff brought a claim saying that, you know, they should have to disgorge the profits from, uh, from the insider trading. A special litigation committee was set up of two directors who were not on the board at the time of the insider trading, the alleged insider trading, uh, and they were both uh, professors at Stanford University. Special litigation committee uh, prepared its report, a thousand page report, without not including the exhibits, um, and recommended that the claims be dismissed. As part of the discovery process that I just mentioned, it was learned that the plaintiffs discovered that there were substantial ties between uh, the two special litigation committee members, the Stanford professors, and Larry Ellison, Oracle, and the other directors who were, uh, you know, defendants. And the, the focus of those connections was actually the substantial uh, contributions that had been made by Oracle and Ellison and others to Stanford University. And the judge in the case found that those connections um, just raised issues as to the potential independence of the, of the members and refused to defer to that report. Yeah, tainted the report. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, when you say thousand page report, it leads me to ask this question. Is this something that would, you know, with the outside attorneys, would this be the kind of thing that's covered under one's DNO policy? Um, it really depends on the policy. Not every insurance policy is the same. There are instances and examples where the insurance will pick up the cost of the Special Litigation Committee because it's related to investigating the derivative case and that comes within the coverages. And then there are other policies that would say, no, this is not in defense of that case. And, and so the company itself would have to bear the cost of the investigation. Do you have, um, I know you gave us an example of one that worked on the negative side, which was Oracle. Do you have any cases mm -hmm. that um, you can talk about or give examples about where um, a board has gone ahead and formed the committee and it's worked like sure. it was supposed to? I mean, one of the examples that, um, uh, that we worked on, and I, I won't give the name, but it was a company where there was actually uh, a significant fraud at the company and a derivative case was brought, special litigation committee was established, and the committee determined that um, there were claims that should be pursued against some of the former officers who had participated in the fraud, and then there were other claims that should not be pursued because they were not in the best interest of the company, uh, because there was no insurance coverage for those particular claims, and for other factors and reasons. And that report was presented to the court and the court um, accepted the report and allowed the companies, uh, the special litigation committee, to take over pursuit of the particular claims that it said should be pursued and to drop the claims that it said should not be pursued. So that's an example of where it worked. Um, and, you know, it's actually interesting in the Oracle case where the court uh, refused to accept the special litigation committee's recommendation, the case proceeded. Um, but ultimately, the defendants were successful and they won summary judgment in the case. So, but of course, it was a multi-year process, it was expensive, they were subject to, you know, depositions and the like. So, it would have been much better if the report were accepted at the outset. Well, Greg, I want to thank you for bringing such a bright light to this topic that, again, I'm not sure that we've ever discussed before, the Special Litigation Committee. Um, so. Uh, thank you for doing that. And that will conclude this um, edition of Corporate Board Members Informational Webcast. We hope you'll join us again where we'll take a look at another hot topic that uh, we can make you a better board member or committee member. Thanks for joining us. Greg Wiener can be reached at greg.wiener at freefrank.com. This has been a presentation of Corporate Board Member, an NYSE Euronext company.